So at this point, I'm pretty sure it's not a surprise to anyone that I have a small, large, growing obsession with waistcoats, especially the ones from the 90s because they tend to be quite jazzy. So today we're making this puppy and today's theme is sewing because of course I am a seamstress and therefore I need a sewing inspired waistcoat to use when making every one of my projects. So this is what we're aiming for guys, looking as happy and chuffed as this lady is here with her waistcoat. Also, is it me or is she wearing a jumper underneath? Like I'm, I kind of figure the replace coat at least kind of replaces the jumper, but that's neither here nor there. This one thankfully comes with a list of instructions and this is what all the panel looks like. Absolutely gorgeous. So I suppose we should cut her out. As it was my turn to cook dinner that night, Ben was kind and lovely enough to donate his time and iron the panel for me. I'll be honest here and say it was then a few days before I got around to really starting this project. And this is just because I got busy editing videos and unfortunately while cutting out my next project can wait, the posting of my weekly Wednesday uploads cannot. So remember to subscribe so that you don't miss them. Once the lining fabric was cut out, which was actually a piece of leftover cream fabric from a project I made absolutely years ago, it was then ironed before I began assembling the layers. When everything was at last pinned in place, the big scissors finally came out and we got cutting. Also, the odd camera angle is because my camera batteries malfunctioned and I didn't want to pause my work while getting them recharged. Hi guys, little one. Well, no see i have been a bit distracted um mm, yes well we're taking a break from that because there is various things that have to dry and so all the pieces of my summer waistcoat are now out and set out and my laundry's on so sorry for any background noise but we need to do some stuff now i have been reading the instructions which i very helpfully have just hung from my tv and what i'm seeing is that it's telling me that with a lot of these appliques it wants me to pre-fold the edges over so i've done a little experiment with this one here so as you can see here what i've done is actually trimmed down the batting on the inside folded the edge over and then i'm gonna think i'm gonna just pin it directly onto that so rather than sewing it and then sewing it again onto here we're just gonna try and do it in one big hit because i am lazy but someone told me to stop calling myself lazy so i am being efficient today now because this one has worked out quite nicely we have all of these other ones that i do believe we pr should probably do and once everything is pinned on i am probably gonna sew a few things but then the other thing i am going to do is i'm also going to start quilting it however the mistake that i made in my spring waistcoat is that I sewed all the way up to the edges and this didn't really work out well because then when I went to sew the edges I had these big lumps of wadding that I couldn't trim because it was quilted. So I'm going to fit it before I start quilting it but after I've sewn all the appliques on which I think is a good compromise. <laughs> Fingers crossed anyway. So Sherlock is trying to convince himself that he fits in my sewing box. So uh, yeah this is a new one. Can you not get your last leg inside Shirley? Does it not fit? Is it a bit small, maybe? Oh, for God's sake, what are you actually doing, cat? Yeah, I think that's the best idea for everyone. Come on, get down. Don't just settle on the project. Do you know what, sod it. I can wait till later to do work, it's fine. One out of the box Sherlock settled down next to me while I got trimming and pinning. Once each section was trimmed and the fabric was rolled over to cover up the raw edges, I pinned it to where it was supposed to be on the waistcoat pieces. At this point, I did realise that I don't think I was supposed to be putting padding on the back side of the appliques. However, I am going to stand by my decision on this as it gives them a wonderful 3D effect and makes it stand out from the awesome but rather busy print on these lovely 80s panels. Once they were all pinned on, I began trying to fit it. It did take a few goes, however, in the end, the sides of the waistcoat were greatly reduced and everything looked very very nice so somehow this has worked and it's actually worked really damn well what i'm gonna do is try and do all the machine quilting on it and once all the machine quilting is done i can actually sew it together and then sit down to do all the hand stitching in one go because we're not being lazy we are being productive and effective so i think black's going to be the most used color for the quilting so i'm going to go find some nice black thread so that i can whip this up there's a few areas like here i think white would suit and maybe like a pink out pin maybe a pink down there possibly a purple a couple of the bits are going to be hand stitched but that's fine also like just look at this design i utterly love it it's going to be great to wear in all my sewing videos now i did go to change threads but my machine was hooked up with white and as it happened i had one white line to stitch so we did that 
swapped it to the pink to do two pink lines and then at last we were onto the purple. Yes, purple. I decided to save the best for last as that was going to be the biggest one to do, which meant we also had to quickly stitch on some turquoise because I forgot about that as well. Then we were finally onto the black thread and boy oh boy was there a lot to get done here. It did take a while but overall I love how it was turning out and somehow it was also super neat, which honestly I am surprised because let's face it I am not normally a neat person. For this waistcoat, unlike my spring one, I mostly stuck to straight stitches to make it quilted with a few zigzag stitches thrown in for the appliques just because the wobbly lines just didn't really seem to fit. Okay so I just started quilting this little bit at the bottom here so going along the small stripes and I honestly hate how it's turning out it's going super wrinkly I really don't like it so what I'm gonna do is just finish off this bit up here which is the only other black thing I have to do and then we're gonna unpick all of this and I did just notice that there's this green and this green which I'm also going to quilt but I need to thread up green because I didn't do that beforehand and then that's all the quilting that we're doing by machine done the rest is going to be hand done but I'm going to do the hand stuff once it's attached and is actually wearable. Unpicking is such a frustrating task not least of all because it always makes me feel like I've done something wrong however at least for this it was over reasonably quick. Then I stitched the green and this definitely came out way neater than expected not to mention that I matched the thread perfectly to the colour on the waistcoat which I'm just a little bit proud of. Okay so I am about to stitch this so that it is an actual wearable waistcoat and I'm just trying to decide on the buttons. I can't decide if I like these flower ones better because they are some of my favourite buttons I have but then these ones are slightly larger and they do go with the colour scheme. I think I'm going to ask the discord and if you guys also want to join discord you can also have a say in what buttons I use as that does seem to be the most regular question I ask and I'll see what they say but until then we don't need to attach these for a while so I'm not too concerned. Also at this point is when I would normally be adding the names of my Ko-Fi donators to my project however because I have been working on this monstrosity giant pile of paper on the floor that's drying because I've had to patch it up again the Ko-Fi names for this month have gone into that dress therefore this one does not have any names to it sadly but if you would like your name sewn into my next project please check out my ko-fi link is down below and there is loads of free and paid patterns on the ko-fi shop which i encourage you guys to check out the next day i also took five minutes before editing my nerdy weekend in london video to sew everything together and make it technically wearable god i am an idiot so i was gonna unpick this side because it's been a few days and honestly this thing just here not lining up is really really bothering me and then i realized that actually if you look on this side that outside pencil line, this one here, that's the one I was supposed to follow. So, um, yeah, feeling a bit silly now. Is it just because it's inside out? I think it's just because it's inside out and being an idiot. Thank God I haven't unpicked it yet, but this side's definitely coming off. So the side was unpicked and re-sewn. I then began unpicking the quilting on the side seam and shoulders that went past the stitch line. This was so that I could trim the wadding and excess fabric down to prevent the large bulky size that we got on the last quilted waistcoat. I left one layer of cotton on the longer side so that I could fold it over the now raw edges before snuggling up on the sofa to hand stitch while binging my YouTube video subscription list. And if you too like binging your YouTube subscription, don't forget to hit that little notification bell below the video so that you don't miss my next waistcoat along with all my other projects. Okay, so we now have a semi-wearable jacket, which is good. So I think now that the lining is all stitched and kind of neat and tidy, the next thing is going to be, ooh, if I can undo my hair from the pins, the applique just here and the bottom of the ruler on the back. And those are going to need hand stitching with embroidery thread, so let's get on with that. And then we should look at doing the binding, which I need to find some fabric for it, really. So I sat down to start using the embroidery thread in order to attach the heart, but well, it just didn't work out as neatly as I'd hoped, and honestly, I hated it. Okay, so I've started sewing the heart on with French knots, and honestly, it's been a while since I've done embroidery, but I just hate how it looks. I don't even think that it's the French knots particularly look bad. There's one dodgy one, but the rest are fine. I just really, really don't like it. So I'm going to unpick it and use beads instead. Getting rid of the French knots was such a great choice. And soon enough, I was stitching on small white glass pearls that I brought for a project ages ago that I actually never ended up using. These looked absolutely amazing once they were on and I couldn't have been happier with the outcome. And then we were on to the ruler at the back of the waistcoat. For this, I got some really thick embroidery thread because I wanted it to be a little bit shiny. This did take way longer than I would have liked, but I sat there and we did it, and in the end it looked absolutely fabulous. Okay, so the decorative hand stitching is now all done, and so the next thing on the list is to find binding for all these raw edges. Now, I thought I had the perfect fabric. 
which would have been this one just here it is literally the exact shade of purple that the rest of it is however i don't know if you guys can see this but it's actually really quite see-through now this fabric is absolutely gorgeous and i am definitely going to use it for something but it's not going to be used for binding it's just it's too floaty and see-through and it's not gonna hide the raw edges like i need it to hide so i have had a rummage and we've come up with this now these two fabrics you can ignore the orange is for my nemo dress this is for a cosplay christmas thing which we'll go into in a few months this however i got for my vanessa and an aerial cosplay that i'm going to be working on now i've patterned it i'm actually not too far from cutting it out but i want them to be really good so i've been taking my time i have however just done the maths and there is a lot of fabric here and i'm pretty sure cutting enough for the binding for that jacket is going to be absolutely fine and still leave me with plenty of what i actually want to do but as always before we cut we must first iron so let's get on with that so we got to ironing i didn't actually bother to do all of the fabric here as there is about 10 meters of this stuff and i am not going to be using it all right this second so i just need enough for the binding strips the binding strips were then drawn on and they were cut also no they were not straight the top of the fabric was slightly at an angle and i just decided to follow the line because honestly i wanted to save fabric and also it kind of put it on a slight bias which i figured might help Help it get around the corners these then got pinned onto the waistcoat all around those raw edges and i made sure to add a ribbon loop at the neckline so that i could hang it up when i'm not using it as i kind of feel like this waistcoat is going to be living in my sewing room so it needs a way to hang up of course we then moved onto the sewing machine to get all this stitched down and remember if you enjoying this video so far to hit that like button or you know just gently caress it your choice really but either way it seriously does help the channel out and i very much appreciate it i then began the absolutely arduous task of hand stitching everything down this did take a little while however it came out so neat that in the end i just can't bring myself to complain about spending my time doing it not to mention it gave me an absolutely great excuse to watch the next season of ascendance of a bookworm which i may be a little bit obsessed with at the moment okay so all the hand stitching is finally done and my god does it look amazing and it fits so well but we have the results of the discussion on the discord as to what buttons we should have and the result is that as much as the flowers looked lovely these ones just color matched a hell of a lot better so this is what we are going to use so the next job is going to be standing in front of the mirror marking out where all these buttons need to go and then we're going to get to sewing the buttonholes which hopefully will go out a little bit better than what it did last time because i don't know i'm just not particularly happy with how the buttonholes turned out last time but meh it's fine practice makes perfect and these are going to be fantastic with the choice of buttons made i marked where i wanted them to go with pins then took out my seam ripper to neatly tear straight lines for the buttonholes once done i then got my double thread and began hand stitching around the buttonholes this is honestly one of my most favorite times to do when i'm sewing and the more i do them the neater it gets which i suppose is what you would call practice or kinesthetic learning or both as the last thing the buttons were then stitched on again using a double thread for strength and all of a sudden we were actually done so time for the grand reveal this waistcoat definitely fits me way better than the last one i made and the quilting is so much neater too it is definitely going to be kept next to my sewing machine just in case i ever need something light and just a little warming to put on though i'm not sure what occasions i'd actually wear it for if i were not in my sewing room because well it's a fabric panel from the 80s after all so not exactly the quietest clothing but still absolutely gorgeous overall though i really do love it the purple trim was totally the right choice and even the cream lining just seems to be a really good fit the beading around the heart also has to be one of my favorite features of this item of clothing and honestly there is just so much pattern left on this that i think i'm gonna be hand stitching this a lot more given some time and quiet afternoon however the most important question is what do you guys think please let me know in the comments down below well guys i think sherlock is just as happy about this waistcoat as i am it is utterly brilliant and oh so very comfy also the vet said shark is officially a fat cat so someone has to go on a diet <laughs> Apparently that's a little bit offensive. Sorry. Anyway, this came out way better than my last waistcoat. I absolutely love it. It is going to be living in my sewing room and I think it is definitely going to be what I'm going to be wearing while stitching 99% of the time from now on. So get used to seeing it. Otherwise guys, a massive thank you is in order from me to you. If you're watching this, then you're one of the amazing supporters of this channel. And thanks to you, I have literally just found out while filming this, we've gotten monetization. Well, I say we've gotten, I have applied for YouTube monetization because the subscribers and the watch hours are there and guys thank you so much it is an amazing achievement this is something that i have been really looking forward to for several years now since i started this channel and to have come so far with all of you beside me is amazing so i cannot thank you enough do you forgive me for calling you fat <laughs> 
think that's a no. Sherlock says thank you as well, by the way. And if you enjoyed this video, do remember to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to hit subscribe. I'll be back next Wednesday with more cosplay sewing and vintage sewing machine content. Until next time, guys, have a beautiful day. And thank you again. Bye.